Welcome. In this module, we'll talk about human resource security. Now, human resource security is a very important element because people, process, and technology. And whenever we talk about people, we need to manage the human resource security aspects as well. Now, 27001 takes a look at screening and terms and conditions of employment under the prior to employment control objective. So screening and terms and conditions of employment, let's take a look at some of these controls. Uh, for screening, it says availability of satisfactory character references, example, one business and one personal. And these are guidelines from 27002 on this screen that you can see. The 27002 guides us regarding screening, availability of satisfactory character references, example, one business and one personal should be there. A verification, for example, completeness and accuracy of the application, applicant's CV or curriculum vitae. And then 27002 tells us confirmation of claimed academic and professional qualifications under screening and independent identity verification through passport or other ID. And this is all the guidance which uh, 27002 is giving us and 27001 did not tell us. Uh, 27001 just gave us a very brief statement regarding screening. And then screening 27001, uh, 27002 tells us more detailed verification, such as credit review or review of criminal records, especially for sensitive um, staffing positions. Now, the second control objective in 27001 is during employment. And for that, we have three different controls, management responsibilities, awareness, education, and training, and disciplinary process. And let's take a look at what 27002 tells us. Now, for disciplinary process, 27002 tells us the disciplinary process should not be commenced without proper verification that an information security breach has occurred. The formal disciplinary process should ensure correct and fair treatment for employees who are suspected of committing breaches of information security. And 27002 tells us regarding disciplinary process, the formal disciplinary process should provide a graduated, gradual, step-by-step -step measured response that takes into consideration factors such as the nature and gravity of the breach and its impact on business. So this is all detail which was not present in 27001, but which 27002 is guiding us in a very good and effective manner. And then uh, we look at termination or change of employment under 27001, which is the third control objective. And under this, we have one control, which is information security responsibilities, and duties are defined, communicated to employee or contractor and enforced. And 27002 tells us the communication of termination responsibilities should include ongoing information security requirements and legal responsibilities and where appropriate responsibilities contained within any confidentiality agreement and the terms and conditions of employment continuing for a defined period after the end of the employee contractor's employment. So a uh, very good explanation that you know, there may be certain terms and conditions, confidentiality agreements, and even after the employee's term, um, em in employment has been terminated, these conditions and terms and conditions need to be understood and implemented by the employee and the organization. So as you can see, human resource security has quite a bit of detail, and 27002, as we saw in this module, gives great and useful guidance and elaborates the 27001 controls. And that's how you use 27001 and 27002 uh, together. 27002, 27002 gives you all the guidance and the detail and the context and the tips uh, and the ideas on how you can implement 27001 because 27001 is uh, the certifiable standard, but it's very brief, uh, to the point, and generic. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.